Hello and welcome to Ginny's Horse Product Review. I'm Ginny and I just wanted to do a quick video today about boarding stable red flags. Do you know how to recognize them? If you're in the market for a new boarding stable, you need to know how to recognize red flags. This is also really important if you've just moved to a new stable because a lot of barns can look really good online and then when you get there, not so great in real life. Not always, not always as good as they're making it out to be online. In other cases, Perhaps when they show you the place, everything looks great, but once you get there, care can deteriorate and go downhill quick. So be on the lookout for these red flags. My number one red flag is like how the horses look. Are they all mad and cranky because they're being fed late? Do they seem ulcery? Things like that. Looking at how the horses currently look who are in this stable's care is like the number one predictor of the kind of care you're going to get. Are the horses in good weight? And you need to have a pretty critical eye on how to gauge weight in horses because a lot of people will see horses that are fat and think that they look really healthy because they can't see ribs and things like that. But overweight horses are just as unhealthy if not more unhealthy as underweight horses when you're going to check out a barn because you can have issues with laminitis and insulin resistance and things like that. So if you see a bunch of overweight horses, that is a red flag, just as it is a red flag when you see underweight rail fin horses too. Obviously, if you're seeing a lot of overweight horses, there's a risk for founder there and you don't want your horse to be put at risk for that. If you're seeing a lot of underweight horses, that might be an indicator that this barn is stingy with feed or hay. Another red flag is bad online reviews. And I know that not everybody wants to put a stable on blast. I get that the horse world is a small world, but also it seems like there's a ton of common knowledge about different barns that people aren't necessarily talking about in public, but will tell you privately. So perhaps you're looking at stables and you don't know many people to ask about. You can you know, make a request on your local horse Facebook group. Hey, I would love to hear recommendations for stables and also where not to go. I guarantee you, people who are in the know with where not to go will send you a direct message because they want to save you the hassle. So obviously if somebody tells you about their bad experience, that's a huge red flag. Another red flag is, you know, like a messy feed room or untidy areas. And don't try to be judgmental here. If it's not like safety related, um, I wouldn't be too hard on them. Like it's a lot of work to keep up a farm. So, you know, don't have to nitpick about every pile of poop, but if there are safety issues or garbage or things like that, or gates left open, those are serious red flags. If they're leaving the feed room door open all the time, issues like that, red flag. Another red flag is how are the horse stalls and paddocks? Are they clean? Are they filthy? Are there mountains of manure? Again, don't be too picky. Like the, we don't have to get down to every single pile of poop, but you can tell if horses are living in clean paddocks or in filthy stalls. Just take note of that. And if they are filthy, red flag. Also super important, water buckets. I can't tell you how many stables I've been at where the water doesn't get filled up properly. When I was a kid, we had a quarter horse named King and the stable he was at, he was left in a, this is in Florida, in a paddock with no shade and he ran out of water and he was in distress and a vet was there, saw him, said, put this horse inside, give him water. Barn, barn manager didn't do that. When we got out there later in the day, he was in severe distress. He became anhydrotic and stopped sweating and then he never really overcame that. He never, you know, we had to sell him basically as like a retired horse to somebody who didn't want a performance horse. And it basically, you know, that if that's your only horse and somebody leaves it in a paddock without water and you know, the middle of the Florida sun, you know, that's a problem. And I can't tell you how many places I've been at with water issues. And this is, this is like one of my most important things. Horses need water to stay hydrated, to keep their guts going. You can colic. I mean, who knows how many colics you see at these barns happen because they run out of water. So huge red flag. Look at the water buckets. Are they full? Are they cool? Um, are they clean? Horses don't want really dirty water. Again, don't be too judgmental. You know, a little bit of algae happens. You know, we can't be scrubbing buckets every single day. Although that's awesome, those of you that do. <laughs> Just make sure that they've got fresh, cool, clean water at these places. 
what's the overall social energy at this place? Does there seem to be some tension? Are boarders grumpy looking? Ask a boarder how they like boarding there. If they tell you, you know, it's great, awesome. If they tell you it's great, but kind of with a face, might be a red flag. Bring up potential care and management issues with the barn manager or barn owner and kind of gauge their willingness to work with you on some things. For example, maybe your horse has an issue or condition that requires medication. How willingness is the sporting stable to get your medication into your horse? I've been at stables where you gotta do it yourself. If anything's gonna, if they can't dump it in a feed bucket, it's not gonna happen. So if this is an issue and you can't get out every day and your horse needs a medication, you need to talk about these things. Gauge how willing they seem. If they don't seem very excited about it, that could be a red flag. Obviously there are big red flags like a horse being in really poor condition, super overweight, super underweight, but look out for the subtle red flags too. It can take weeks, months, or even longer to see some of these issues crop up. So knowing what you're getting into and keeping an eye out for things is super important, especially at a new stable. If you thought this video was helpful, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Stay tuned for next week's video where I tell you how to be your horse's advocate. Until next time, happy trails.